I was sent a copy of Wife Them by Anna Thunder. This is the story of George Orwell's uh, wife, who was pretty much written out of the narrative of his life and is neglected by many biographers. And I have a lot of thoughts on this and let's talk about it. Hello book friends, welcome back to the channel. Hello if you are new, it's Alyssa. Uh, I am very excited about this book. I can't stop thinking about it. And I just want to first and foremost say thank you to Knopf for sending this to me. Um, but this is Wife Dumb, like I said, by Anna Funder. And this is a narrative nonfiction. So it's not quite a biography. It's a little bit more stylized, but it's about the life of George Orwell's wife. We all know who George Orwell is. He wrote 1984. He is very well known in literary circles at this point. Um, the His books are classics, well beloved uh, amongst readers, literary people in the world. But he was also a man and was incredibly flawed. And he had a wonderful wife, as portrayed in this this book, who doesn't get much space to exist. Uh, she's sort of written out of a lot of his stories. There are a lot of stories that he wrote that are more, a little bit more autobiographical about maybe his time, say, during the Spanish Civil War. And she's not included in those narratives. And you can see her in pockets of it. Um, she is sort of brushed over in biography and sort of forgotten to history. So Anna Funder's idea or goal was to take these letters that his wife wrote to a friend and to rewrite her story or to write her story so that she is, re is, re is written back into the narrative of Orwell's life and given the space to be a person. And it is a very interesting read. It is a very upsetting read and is definitely the kind of book that makes you think twice about an author that you once considered incredibly talented and important to humble them and remember that these are people and they have flaws. This is the story of the marriage behind some of the most famous literary works of the 20th century and a probing consideration of what it means to be a wife and a writer in modern times. And that second bit is probably one of my favorite parts about this book because it's becoming a bit of a theme in this book. In the last few months, I feel like, of 2023, I have been much more interested in this idea of wifedom in general and how the job of wife allows the uh, person of husband or partner to fulfill their own things because they take on so much emotional and like physical of you know burden of the household of life of all these things and it gives the other person space to be creative pursue whatever have a job etc etc eileen o'shaughnessy is his wife and she meets him at a party and they end up having what seems to be sort of a whirlwind like quick little like romance they get married right and she basically gets like packed off to this little country village and lives in this home with like no running water. She's got to go out to the latrine. They have farm animals and she's like working herself to the bone while Orwell is like up there writing stories, doing whatever he wants to do, living sort of a miserable life from the outside. Historians tend to treat her like she was fine with all of this. She was fine with all of George's sort of philandering. There was this idea that like they had some sort of open relationship, which it doesn't appear that they do. It's just that George has decided that he's going to, Orwell's going to sleep with other women. He's a bit of a lech. He, he pounces on women. What a, what a, what a, what a lovely phrase for raping someone. He is incredibly lecherous. He sends tons of letters and notes and hits on so many of her friends. He has actual affairs with women that are just in their life sort of more friendly. Like he is constantly, he's just constantly having affairs. And I guess obviously disgusting. I didn't realize quite how lecherous Orwell really was and how history sort of just kind of treats him like even these like snippets from the biographers under 
puts in here seem to play everything down like somehow it's fine because somehow Eileen was fine with it and I don't know if Eileen was so much fine with it as much as she was resigned to the fact that there was very little she could do about it. There's also a lot of discussion about how her helping and reading and typing and doing all this labor for Orwell to to assist with his writing shaped a lot of his writing as well how they would bounce things back and forth off of each other and she was incredibly critical of his writing and she had was a very talented writer in her own right but because of times and gender and gender politics of the times she wasn't able to pursue a career quite like Orwell was. It's a very upsetting story. She does a lot of things that are very, very interesting. And when she's in Spain, while he's in the Spanish Civil War, she lives this very interesting life, this life full of sort of adventure. And um, she has this very important job and she's she has agency and it's it seems very refreshing for her. And then before long, she's back to her life of living in this like sort of impoverished lifestyle of just taking care of this farm and taking care of George and George who's just riddled with tuberculosis and doesn't really tell anybody and how isn't that nice you're pouncing on women and smooching them and doing all these things and you have TB great awesome thanks he is de definitely not a stand-up guy <laughs> it's really the story of how one man has become successful by absolutely leeching his wife uh, she works herself and he works her literally to death. Uh, it is an incredibly emotionally abusive relationship. It, when you sort of read between the lines, she gets very, very, very sick and requiring an operation. And she is at this point in their relationship where she's been this so long that all of that abuse is internalized and it, she's scared to ask him she feels bad. It's not even scared. It's like she feels guilt for even bothering him with the cost of surgery. So she goes and gets like a cheaper surgeon and doesn't do what she needs to do and ultimately ends up dying. He literally like works this poor woman to death and sucks out every ounce of like whatever he can from her. And it's incredibly infuriating. And this is the backdrop for Funder's discussion on the nature of wifedom and the nature of being a wife. And it's a discussion that I think is popping up a lot more in nowadays is this idea of how having a, the job of wife, taking on the burden of home and family and taking on a lot of the intellectual burden, like the mental burden of making sure everything runs smoothly and there's food in the pantry and there's whatever the kids are taken care of and there's clean clothes at the end of the day, all these things, all these mundane domestic tasks, when they are taken care of, when you don't have to meet any of your own basic needs and it frees up all this time for you to do other things, creatives can create. And how inherently flawed that is and specifically when you think about the traditional gender roles and how they've been applied for generations and the number of women who perhaps could have done more made more etc etc if they had had a wife um, what can you achieve when you have a partner that is a wife uh, in terms of maybe not gender, but in terms of the job that we traditionally associate with a wife. This was phenomenal. It's fantastic. It is gripping. Funder weaves back and forth between straight fact and more embellished uh, narrative fact. She takes fact and creates stories around them, almost like historical fiction, uh, and then brings you right back to the actual historical fact to give you that sort of dramatized color that you would get from watching a reenactment of something you know it is such a wonderful wonderful book so freaking good like I I need everybody to read this this book next book club pick please pick this book I feel like you could have so much discussion about this and there's so much to break down in here and it will leave you enraged. Honestly, when Eileen gets sick and you're watching this spiraling of, of her 
um, and you know that she's going to make the wrong decisions. You know that she's going to not listen to the the better doctor who's telling her she needs to eat and she needs blood transfusions and she needs X, Y, and Z, and it's going to cost her thousands of dollars. This is pre-NHS world. And instead she's like, oh, poor George. He's just not really making any money. I can't possibly do this to George. And she even feels bad in calling George sort of home. So she sort of just dies quietly without him. It is so frustrating and upsetting. Thing that makes this even more frustrating, upsetting is that this is not a unique story. Um, this is not a unique uh, situation for women to be in. And it's why there've been people discussing this for ages the women that break the mold or to push into a man's world talk about this idea of like wifedom and we're talking about it more and more today i see more women online talking about oh it would be nice to have a wife we talk a lot about emotional burden and domestic burden and how even if you have a 50 50 partnership there's still some extra emotional intellectual burden that is happening because perhaps you have to be the one who has to drive your partner to to do the thing a lot of reminding there's still um a lot of like mental task work that happens um that isn't even seen even if you physically divide the labor it's an interesting discussion it's so good i don't know how many times i can tell you it's so good and it's interesting but please pick this up please read this it is new it is wonderful i know nonfiction isn't for everybody but i think the weaving in of more narrative um dramatizations of the the facts of Eileen's life and Orwell's life um, are very interesting. The parts during the Spanish Civil War are incredibly interesting and they they speak to a lot of the paranoia that Orwell felt uh, throughout much of his life. And also there's a lot of questioning about just who Orwell is in general. Um, who was he as a person? You know, biographers, because of his notoriety as a writer, Biographers seem to have been more delicate with telling his story and have seemed to have played down certain things. They seem to brush certain things under the rug. A lot of things around his sexual proclivities, um, whether or not he was homosexual, he seems to make a lot of homophobic comments, but also seems perhaps he was repressing his queerness. Um, there's a lot of question marks around that. Perhaps he was just an insatiable sex addict. We don't really know, but there's a lot of like glossing over some of the things that were maybe less stellar in um, Orwell's life, particularly the way he treated women and his wife, and more focusing on just like, how he was a great man. Instead of writing out those facts about a person, uh, Anna Funder is writing them back in and writing his wife back into the narrative to give you a more complete picture of uh, who she was, but also who Orwell really was and what life may have been like living with this man. Definitely, definitely one of my favorite books of the year. I honestly can't stop thinking about it. The idea that this man is out there just smooching women with tuberculosis, left, right, and center. No, I'm going to stop because I'm getting rambly, but thank you guys for watching. Please pick this up. It is out now. Like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want.